Paul experienced um, a defeat in uh, Athens with tiny um, success when Dionysius and a few more people believed in him. But by and large, it was a fallen mission, a failed attempt, because the Greeks did not want to listen to him, specifically when he spoke about the resurrection. So now he is going down to Corinth. I wonder what was in his heart when he was going towards Corinth, but probably he was spinning with a lot of thoughts what had just happened to him in Athens. When he gets to Corinth, uh, he meets a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, also his wife Priscilla. Then every Sabbath he entered into discussion in the synagogue attempting to convince both Jews and Greeks. Unfortunately, there is a stone wall of rejection on the part of the Jews. Number one, look at the uh, resilience, courage, perseverance that St. Paul demonstrates that was not of his own making, but was God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, working in him and through him. He just does not get tired, although beaten up, rejected, cast out, experiencing a failure after failure with small success here and there. But overall, it is a very hard mission. When he finds out that the Jews in the synagogue don't want to listen to him, he needs to make a discernment. Find out what does God want from my mission? What is out there that he wants me to do? On one hand, we may say, well, he could keep talking to the Jews in different synagogues, but maybe there is a different design. I already met a number of people who told me that behind a failed project, there was a major plan of God. Specifically, some priests told me that as they were discovering their vocations, things were going very badly in their private life, in their professional life. A failure upon a failure, being uh, degraded or fired from work or something was not working right, till they had to discern properly what God wanted to tell them. It was a message of the Lord. Look, I'm closing certain doors for you to start asking and uh, praying what would there be that God has in mind. He talks to us through concrete facts that we cannot understand without His Spirit. Another example that I recall, a man who was an engineer he was working not exactly in his profession and his business was experiencing one failure upon another. There were a lot of uh, issues. He was persevering uh, as one of the uh, founders of that company. He was praying, but I thought, okay, let me still keep going. Till one day he walked into the adoration chapel knelt down and started praying from his heart. Please, God, show me what you really want from me. But that was a first prayer, as he recounts, that was mm, done from the bottom of his heart. When he walked out of the adoration chapel, a few minutes later, a phone rang. It was a person he had known for years, with whom he had not been in touch, who called him saying, look, we're, 
working on a big project. It will be a hospice plus another um, set of buildings um, run by a Catholic organization, just to say the least. And we really need an engineer. And God put you on our hearts, having already called other people who declined the offer. What about uh, you? Then he talked to his wife and they decided to relocate. And that was exactly what God had in mind. And the later on, new doors were opening. But he had to ask Jesus Christ. This is what St. Paul did when he decided, okay, now, from now on, I will go to the Gentiles. First, He's very harsh towards them, saying, your blood be on your heads. You don't want to listen. You don't want to be open. I will not be pushing anymore. I will go to the pagans. Look, St. Paul, who was so smart, well phrased in the scriptures, in the tradition, capable of uh, dialoguing and debating and explaining and convincing. Now, his great talent is being used in a different way. He will go to the pagans, meaning he has to start from the basics, from scratch. But that was exactly what God was indicating to him. I don't want you to be stuck in the synagogue. You have a different mission. But for him to discern that, well, he had to pray. He had to ask the Lord. What we find out in today's gospel, when Jesus Christ speaks a little while and you will not see me, in a little while you will see me. And the disciples are actually discussing among themselves, asking each other, what do you think the master meant? Many times we can keep discussing and debating and trying to figure things out on our own and we will fail because the working of God far surpass our understanding. We need the Spirit to help us interpret and understand. Jesus, in today's Gospel, sees clearly that the disciples are confused, would like to ask, but they don't really ask. They are debating, they are discussing, they are wondering, how come you don't ask me? How come you try to figure things out that you can't? There are many failed plans and projects that God had in mind for us because we have never really asked. That's what the saints teach. This was what many mystics heard from Jesus Christ who said, I prepared real words of salvation for you, but many people never got to know about them, far less even to put them in practice. The reason for that was they never asked. I was trying to call their attention, but they were so fixed on their own mind, being so stubborn, being so stiff-necked that the Lord, even though trying to indicate and showing a different path, would not get through because we would be going towards our dreams, our plans, our own ideas, sometimes thinking that God's will. But again, if God wants something, First of all, we'll have interior peace, consolation, comfort, and confirmations, and the doors will be opening and others will be closing. Right here, the Lord says, how come you don't ask me? You recall that Mary, Martha's sister, was at Jesus' feet listening. Constantly, we hear from God who is telling us, listen, listen. Place yourself in an attitude not of just passing hearing that it gets in from one to one ear and gets out from the other, but be attentive and careful to what I'm telling you so that my plan and your happiness and salvation would be fulfilled and realized. These things are critical, but God's plan is never forced heavily upon us so that we are burdened against our will. We are meant to embrace what the Lord is calling us with the strength that comes from Him. 
and look at the interpretation that Jesus Christ gives to his own words, little while longer and you will see me and you will not see me. He gives a completely different view that the disciples might have even come up with because he says, Amen, amen, I say to you, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will become joy. The problem is that if we are not discerning, not asking, not listening, we can remain only in the first unit of this phrase, which is, you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. Period. We don't want to hear anything else that the Lord has to say because we would look left and right thinking that God made a huge mistake in our lives as opposed to those who are out there in the world not knowing Jesus Christ, living worldly life, being completely uh, on their own, sort of rejoicing in what the world is offering. And many people stopped exactly on this phrase saying, you know what? I will actually quit and will have fun with what the world is offering. They never discerned. They never asked. But the second part of the phrase says, you will grieve. But, that's an important uh, unit, a word that joins the first part with a promise. Your grief will become joy. The divine joy will come to you as the working of the Spirit in you, the world instead will rejoice and their seemingly merry rejoicing will turn into grief that will remain there. But with Jesus Christ, now you're uh, in grief. You're struggling. You don't understand. Ask me and I will show you how this process will be turned into joy, which means the sign of the presence of the Holy Spirit. Because at first, as St. Paul was experiencing defeat upon defeat and struggles and difficulties, there was a grief there. Clearly, when he discerned, when the Lord enlightened him, your grief will turn into joy because you will see the conversions of many pagans through you. We need to ask more, pray more, be humble to be guided by the Spirit and shown the path that to us at first may not be known, but will be always for our greater benefit and especially for the salvation of those the Lord is sending us to.